That's the standard answer. In fact, that's what I found in the web. Okay, I call it web one two. Any other idea? I would I would say if, if emission absorption is a two step process, then this is really a four step process. In other words, you have the emission absorption by the interfering medium, and then you have the emission by the interfering medium, the and then the absorption by the receiver. Wait a moment. Wait a moment. That's a very important thing. And there is no emission by the interfering medium. The cloud of the star is a passive. Either you absorb one line and the other ones just keep going. That's very important. Okay. In other words, the cloud is not an emitter, it's only an absorber. This is physics. Okay? Well, it's very important. Because otherwise there's no problem. The problem is precisely the only emitter is the star. The cloud is a passive filter. Okay. Now the solution that you advance, advance is exactly what Web One this is a Paul Stein person from NASA answering to this kid. So let's read the solution. As they, he says, imagine an absorption line in the spectrum of a star. To its right and left in the spectrum are bright emissions, which get shifted by the Doppler effect due to the relative motion between the star and us. Both lines in the same direction, the red and the blue. Would the dark gap between them shift the same way? It would if the dark absorption feature is caused by the gas at this star. So that's exactly what you said. You agree that that's what you have in mind? Everything shifts. It's like a window. You cannot move the hole, but you move the frame. Right? Okay. Uh, this is a summary of what is being said. I'm going to be very specific. With a star receding at this velocity, uh, the wavelength 656 is going to go to 670, but it's going to be absorbed. 655 goes to 669 and 657 to 771. Uh, plus minus some decimal, but this is what you're thinking. The neighbors shift, so the hole that is absorbed is going to appear like a shifted hole. Right. Good. Now, what is the problem with this solution? Here's my criticism. I don't pretend that you understand it first sight, okay? I'm going to read it, but the whole talk is to see why this is a problem. The problem with this answer is that it assumes that the absorbed dark line is already produced without explaining. And then they speak of a Doppler shifting as happening afterwards. In reality, the Doppler stretching occurs before absorption at the atmosphere. Light emitted by the star is redshifted and then it hits the atmosphere. So a 656 photon stretched to 670 cannot be absorbed at the atmosphere, otherwise, quantum mechanics is violated. Now, that's the way I explain it. If you don't understand it, it's okay because it's a little bit complicated. Uh, emission occurs at the star, and the Doppler shift, the star is going away. All the wavelengths are going to be Doppler shifted. All of them, including the 656. So, 656 goes to 670 before being absorbed by the atmosphere. And it cannot be absorbed because an atom of hydrogen has to absorb 656. It cannot absorb 670, or you violate quantum mechanics. Is that right, Ron? Are you? I, I, I want to say off the top, it's a function of whether the velocity is moving of the star is causing it, or your receipt and recession velocity is causing it. Is, okay. that, is that right? This, you know, in your model? It could be a, 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 an alternative, but with, when you see this redshift to the whatever lines, we, we say the star is going away from us. Amazing. We could say that we are going away from the star, but the interpretation is that the star is going away from us. Yes. Is this, is this atmosphere not traveling with the star? Yes, they're going together, and that's the problem. Together. Well, I think that that solves the problem. It, it, it's what? You don't think there's a problem there? No? She said it solves the problem. Oh, good. Maybe you're not my brother. <laughs> how, how it solves the problem? You're talking like a relativist. Mm. No, no. This is the only alternative. Relativity is said from the point of view of the atmosphere, there's no doctor because there's no relative motion. Therefore, 656 is emitted. Therefore, we swallow 656. No problem. Well, there's a period. Right? They don't recognize that there's an in between stretching of the wave. Now, is there is an in between or not? That's the problem. We're going to have to discuss it. I was just going to say that the photons emitting from the sun don't know what their speed is relative to Earth, yeah. so therefore they can't do this shifting. We observe the shifting at Earth 
because we know what our speed is relative to that star. No. The star doesn't know. We don't need to. We don't need to know our speed. We see a shift and we say, that star is going away from this close. By the way, the sun is not going away from us. It's at the same distance, okay? So the fans go from a half of the story and they no moving this. But I'm glad that you pointed to this other idea that there's no doctor between the star and the atmosphere. Because that's exactly what relativity is going to say. But not classical theory. Yes? I, 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 the way I reconcile it is that uh, the doppler between the source and receiver, whatever goes in between, is accessible not only in frequency domain, but in time domain. It's a time, do time delay, time derivative. Yeah. At that point, it doesn't matter where that cloud is. That's right. It's going to do the right thing because right. with the star, it's going to produce the right pull and, and, and in, in frequency, and it's going to produce also the right time delay, time derivative. No, no problem. The time is, is there's a time interval, but it doesn't matter how much time. It could be a new star or a small time of time. And with that, the time is very important for me. It's two physical processes, okay? Let's keep going and we'll, we'll see the whole package. So, as a first scenario, let's do something much easier. A single cloud of hydrogen and nebula, and there's a very dense quasar, really billions of years away, and here we are. This is in the astronomy book, this is the other case. They can tell the motion of the cloud because, again, the absorption lines are shifted, okay? So, if there's no motion, well, no problem. Uh, keep going. If there's no motion, okay, no problem. You have uh, the equation emits all kinds of radiation, a rainbow, then this is hydrogen, it absorbs the six fifty six. therefore we get a dark band at 656, okay? So, no motion, no problem. It's like the sun, okay? I put here the white band. In the next one, now we have motion of the nebula away from us. Okay, here's where I want to create my solution. So, let's see if you agree with this. The nebula goes at the same velocity from before. So, here's the equation that emits all kinds of things. Uh, it emits the red uh, 656. It emits another one. Uh, now, how is the nebula going to absorb 656? Because when that nebula moves, the C56 appears as less than C56. It's being shrunk. If there is a Doppler effect, because this is going against the light, in fact, C56 is not going to go to 642, I calculate. And it cannot be swallowed. So the nebula cannot swallow C56 because it looks like 642. It has to swallow 670, that by the Doppler shrinking effect is going to appear like C56. And then, of course, the light that keeps going misses the 670, even though the nebula eats it as 656. Does that make any sense? Yes, sir. Now, you agree with this? You, I, my battle is, is, oh, is won. <laughs> However, there's a little uh, observation here. <laughs> and I'm going to talk about the end, about the quantum mechanical aspect. Because this means that this hydrogen atom that has to, is ready to absorb 656, can process 670 by the mere fact that it's moving against the light and is seeing it as a 656. Now, have you ever seen that, that a photon is what it appears by Doppler effect? I have never heard any quantum mechanical theory of the Doppler effect. So, you have a chicken that is too, too long. You are moving, it becomes shorter, now you can eat it. Uh, but I did find a little interaction between Bohr and Schrodinger and Dirac in the 1918s, where Bohr, in fact, po uh, pointed to a problem when an atom emits a photon, it recoils by momentum conservation. And then he said there are two frames of reference, one before and one after. So there's a, there's a problem here, he said. So he's tackling the problem of Doppler, I mean quantum mechanic emission or absorption, and Doppler. It's the only paper that I found. This is 1918. Immediately Schrodinger, Schrodinger in 1922 said we have to modify the relativistic Doppler equation. And he introduced two velocities, V1 and V2, before and after the process. And he gave it very complicated and didn't make the question. But then the Rack in 1924 said, no, you don't need to do nothing. The formalist in the four dimension takes care of it. And I don't understand what the guy said. I 
respect. But this little. Uh,